Real show, here we go. Real show, here we go. You know that it's gotta be that time, so this is what we chant. What keeps on getting them all amped in advance? Come on. You and I rocking out with Iron Man, F.E. You get the general's point of view on top of Roger's rants. Whenever it's happening out, we're putting the most minutes in you. Already know what that's about, you know that win is win. Crush whatever's on task, check the podcast. It's the champ and the tramp, let the bomb blast. You want to get going Let's here? Let's get or? it. Let's get into it. Just go here from now. Oh, all right. No clapping. Let's do it. No clapping. No clapping. Like clap, we, don't cla- clap. we don't need to no. clap. All right. Lou is getting Lou so says, he's getting so cocky over there, our producer. <laughs> he don't need no clap. He don't need to sync up the audio with the video with the clap anymore. Good, good to go. Well, what did you see? Uh, I know I was telling you about it. The um, Alex Hernandez documentary on netflix it's not alex i think it's aaron uh, aaron, aaron, aaron. Yeah. Alex. <laughs> well, aaron. Like, is that another one <laughs> i'm sure there's yeah. an alex hernandez yeah. somewhere um i i well, okay so i'll tell you my story because i'm i'm into documentaries and i knew that was coming out but i didn't know it was out until you told me i didn't know it was on netflix and that is my type of documentary man you're into the uh, crime bro, bios i we, we could talk all night about that you know kind of crime. well here tell, tell me what you think about the aaron hernandez one well, I, I got to tell you my story first. I started watching it last night, but I had the kids. I was by myself. I had the kids. And it's a tough one to watch in front of the kids. Yeah. So I would, we played Uno, and I didn't start watching it until late, and I let them on their iPads really late so that I could watch it, right? And I don't like letting them on their iPads, but they were just, just about bedtime anyway. So I'm watching it. Grayson fucking shits his pants. <laughs> so now I got to put him in the tub. So I made it. I left it running, but made it halfway through. And it just kind of played out to the end. I got him in the tub, and then I got him in bed. So I watched half. And I watched the other half tonight, but you told me to be here at a certain time. Right. I probably missed 15 minutes of the very end. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I saw, so you got most of it. Got Three episodes, right? You got three episodes? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So you got, you, got, you got most of it. Yep. But, yeah, I, you know, obviously. I, you know what, you know, though? I, I already knew the ending. Well. <laughs> fucking die. <dies. laughs> yeah, I guess you know the ending. <laughs> but you don't. You miss some 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 parts. Of I it. did miss some parts. Yeah, but I don't know how they bring up the gay stuff though. I don't, I don't understand why. Well, I don't understand what the point. I, like I get it. I guess that maybe was the one part that didn't make sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know why they, they there was such a big emphasis. It was like the one on thing it. that couldn't be really substantiated. It was one guy saying his best friend really in yeah, high school saying, yeah. "Hey man, we used to hook up in high school," but right. completely uncooperated by anybody else. And yeah, well, and, and then it seemed like they tried making a connection by bringing the gay football player. It, in, right. in who, the interview who, who, had who, but no like they didn't other, I mean I guess other, they played on the same team at one point right. but there was no other other uh, than, lines crossed other there. than being a gay guy in the NFL he had no affiliation either right no, so I don't know what they were trying to do I think they I were think trying to make, make it a little juicier a little juicier yeah, 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 it does, yeah. It does. Yeah. but I mean regardless how about the CTE did you see that that part I did. They're trying to CTA. I did, yeah. And I don't, I don't know, man. Like you know, I heard the one guy was saying, he's like, dude, a lot of people have CTA. They're not going out fucking around, well, killing people. You know, uh, and I, I think I knew this. I think I heard this a long time ago. But um, who, who, uh, Suao, um, Junior Seau, Ju- Seau, sorry, Seau, um, shot himself in the chest so that his brain yeah, could be examined. Right, right. I, I'd forgotten that, but now, I, yeah, it wasn't. I mean, too, I mean that was 2010, yeah, 2008, yeah. maybe. I don't know. But what a. Um, we had to know I don't, something's I up, don't right? know how to phrase this. I'm going to phrase it the wrong way, but almost what a gift to leave society noble, and noble, noble thing yeah, to do right. for other football players and other people that may be affected by this. At least if that was a contributing factor to him committing suicide anyway, you know what I mean? Well, I think that's what he thought, and yeah, that's why he right. did it to the chest. I mean, right, that's right. like risky. That's risky, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, might yeah. Not, you might make it that one. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't like the fact that they're, well, not that they are, but you know, kind of contributing him killing people with cold blood th- th- by CTA. Because, right. you know, plenty of people. Correct. I guess I don't get to. I don't know. Like, where, where's all the 70s football players uh, yeah, that have, you know, they, they wore, probably got hit worse. Where's, they the, probably, where's the guy that wore, like, literally, literally leather on his head back in the yeah, day? Yeah, right, I mean? right. And then, uh, you know, I'm sure they have CTA. If yeah. these guys have CTA, if, if CT is real, it's, it's been around since brain's been around. Correct. Right? Correct, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Or maybe it's just that the social media and cover so much more cover and so much more attention to it, and that's why we see all of it yeah, well, now, what, and whereas opposed we didn't see it back, is, in, back is then. Is modern medicine advancing and finding things that we just didn't know about, or are they just creating things that probably... No, I think that, I mean, if, if it's measurable, right, it has to be real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she said. I remember the 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 person that that checked his brain, 
said it was one of the worst they've ever seen. I saw the you know? uh, the MRI. I yeah. guess it would be of it. Yeah, it was definitely a changed brain, no question. But I, uh, you know, I'm throwing it back to your stats from the other day, where you said they interviewed or or did yeah, a the, CAT scan of 150 something like well, that. Well, you, you know, you can only. Well, I heard now recently. Recently, they found that way to test for CTE before you die. But I think until then, you can only look at postpartum brains. Okay. Right, is that postpartum? No, it's postpartum. Not. Post, post after yeah, you have a baby. It's a baby, yeah. Post uh, something. Post something. Post mortem. 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 Post mortem. Yeah, mortem. mortem. <laughs> you get hit in the head a lot, bro. Yeah. You might have CTE. Yeah, I, good chance. <laughs> but uh, post mortem, you could. It's the only way you could tell if they officially have CTE. But I think they just they just found a way to to do it now. Um, okay. But yeah. But wait a minute. Wait. You you gave me stats the other day. Yeah, no, I said you. post mortem. Oh, you did. Yeah. I uh, maybe didn't. I mean, I said postpartum. <laughs> how would you, how would you find 150 football players to do a postpartum? Well, it wasn't like professional football. They said football from they could have played football one time in their lives, from high school all the way up to professional. Oh God, that's not a very good. Uh, I know, because I mean, what if yeah. what if you know you played uh, in high school football? Right. You, you know, you stunk and you right. played four downs. Right. You know, right. your whole right. career. That's not a really good gauge, but. Even so, right. like they said, it's 150 brains, like 140 my, of them, 48 my, of them. My had point to that CTA. is if that's really how that scan happened, you can't label that as a test for football play. That's an average guy just going through life that picked up a football. Well, yeah, you know I, I, I guess, I guess, but I mean, you know, there are the correlation is they at least played football. Yeah. Okay. You know? All right. Um. But again, if it's that big of a number, like have they done a test of just 150 regular brains that people that didn't play football? Because they're saying like. Uh, you know, just jarring your body can give you CTE. Not even hitting your head, just jarring your body. I'm like, dude, how many times have I been picked up and slammed Nobody, on a mat? You know, yeah. just day in and day out, drilling, wrestling, not even going live. If you're the most cautious person in the world, you still have slip and falls. You still yeah. step on ice probably at some point in your life. Like, everybody has some sort of Yeah, I, I feel like sure. it, maybe this, maybe it's, I don't want to say it's unavoidable. But it might may be unavoidable yeah, like if to, that uh, if it's, the percentage is that high. I'd like to know what the measure is to be considered... Where is where is the threat? What are they measuring exactly to diagnose you with CTE? What is the? I think the size of your brain or the holes in your brain, I believe, because that's what they were saying with, with Aaron Hernandez. He had some some holes in his brain, and especially on the, what's the the frontal lobe, yeah. and that that's uh, emotion, correlates that's with the yeah the emotional yeah. and and um you know real uh just do stuff out of the blue. What do you, you know what I mean? So yeah, like, um, like crimes of passion almost. Or I mean crimes of passion, but just very. Uh, Spontaneous, you know, no, nope. not in control. I think that 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 controls that part of the brain. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, anyway. Well, I mean, did, but did you, did, I mean, it was crazy. Like this dude. The the crazy part to me was that right. Everybody heard about that he was connected to a murder, right? Like everybody heard that. Everybody knew that. And I heard, oh, he possibly could could be connected to another, you know, homicide in Boston. But if you watch it. If 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 he did it, I'm not saying he did because it was never proven. But well, no, that dude was whacking was people when he was a Florida Gator. He was well, yeah, shooting. He was dudes. shooting people. They said they got they got they, away. They with didn't it. die, right? Right. So they there's didn't two. Die. There's two. There's in the two. Car. Right. Florida Gator, college guy. I mean, he couldn't be. He got drafted when he was like 20, 21. Oh, so no, like, yeah, younger, younger. I think he was seven, seven. Oh no, drafted. drafted yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So all by the age of twenty, he'd already shot two people in a car that did nothing really to him. That one guy, you know, bumped up against him in a club and spilled a little alcohol. No, that was people he killed. Right. That, well, he didn't get convicted well, the, for that. He left the club and, and shot the first two. That was in a club as well. I yeah, think, yeah in Miami, what, in Miami. Right, I yeah. forget what those guys did, but it was some, right, something, something in a club. Right, something stupid, yeah. Right. So he, he shot two. They didn't die, right? So then he goes on and supposedly, alleged, yeah, that's allegedly. Yeah, all, all that is alleged. Alleged. Right. Um, shoots another two guys from the club, which die. Then they hide the, the, the car, right, in his aunt's in garage. His aunt's garage. Right? And then he shoots his buddy, who's like the drug dealer gun supplier, in the face. And that, and mother, guy lives. that motherfucker lives. Yeah. That dude's a badass. Yeah, he was, man. And, and, was, and that re- guy doesn't even tell who shot him. He doesn't even rat. He doesn't even rat him out. They should, guy, a, they should make the a dog. Forrest Whitaker eye. They should, right? Yeah, they should make, well, he, bro, he, he's lucky he got any eye. He shot in the I face. It's crazy. Bro. It's crazy. He got a yeah. hole in his head. Yeah. So anyway, that guy doesn't rat. I mean, you talk about a gangster. He doesn't rat. He knows who shot him, and he calls him the next day. Hell yeah, he, he wakes, did. He, he did. wakes up and calls Aaron Hernandez the next day. That, that is tough. And that, Aaron says, "Aaron says, who's this? Yeah. He says, you know who the fuck this is." He like came back from the dead. But the cops <laughs> had just walked out of the of the emergency room, questioned him, saying, Question "Who done him. it?" Yeah, who he don't answer. But know. as soon as they walk whoever, out, whoever did it is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most insane thing. 
So that guy lives. So now Aaron's like, you know, he's in, he knows his life is, he, he shot a straight gangster in the face. Right. So he's nervous now. So then he becomes paranoid. And then he, and he started get. That's Odin. when he shot those. Other, yeah, Odin. No. But but why? What? Oh, because supposedly. But you say why he shot Odin? Though? Well, because Odin got wind of it, right? Might have been. No, they said Odin found out, caught him in an act of of uh, you know messing with another guy or something like oh, that. Supposedly, okay. See, this is what the, they said. This is the, the end. end. This I was at the, the end. Very end. Okay. And uh, I mean, damn. I guess we should have done spoiler alert for these people. Yeah. But. Um, you know, too bad. We we talked about this, mm. and you could tell I'm I was juicy and everything, ready to go for yeah, it. So, yeah, yeah. we're our, our bad. Yeah, yeah if we uh, <laughs> didn't do a spoiler, we we apologize. But you you if you heard the beginning of this, you knew it was going to be an Aaron Hernandez uh, conversation. So you should or speak. Alex Hernandez, one yeah, or the other. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez, <laughs> Hernandez. But I mean, like like we said, well, you kind of know the story. Yeah. I mean, but this gives you a lot of different different uh, yeah. little background information. I remember I remember I was in Bristol at ESPN. You know, working like for working UFC fights, I, I can't remember what 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 year, which fight what, I was what working. Is, what does that mean? Working, selling popcorn? What are you doing? No, there? Bristol. Yes, oh, I should have clarified. ESPN is yeah. in Bristol, Connecticut. Okay. So I was there work. You know, uh, oh, analy- oh, doing oh, analysts yeah, okay, for ESPN. Okay. okay. Uh, Bristol is where all this one took place, mm-hmm. and the cops were everywhere, everywhere. Okay. Well. Yeah. That's when they were searching the the lake or that that pond or yeah, whatever the diving gear. Yeah. 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 It's crazy, man. It was, a, it was a good documentary. I, I got to watch like the last maybe fifteen minutes to catch the very end. But I mean, you know, he he, How, ends, he ends up hanging himself. Correct? He hung himself. Now, now look at this, right? So he didn't he didn't get convicted for the two murders in Boston, mm-hmm. right? So he's serving life sentence. Um, he th- you know the lawyer that got him out of the uh, the two murders in Boston is like some famous celebrity lawyer. Well, he's the one that that defended Anthony. Casey. Yeah, Anthony. Right, yeah, right, right. So this guy's really good supposedly. So I think he was gonna start working his appeal mm-hmm. for the original case, the Odin case. And if you see when he got out off of the two murders, he was real emotional. And they're like saying, "Why is he so emotional there?" But when you know he got life sentence, he wasn't emotional at all. See, now I gotta watch that because that dude was as comfortable in a maximum security prison in a 7 by 10 cell as he was in a mansion. Every phone call he had, he was joking. Laid back. Laid yeah. back, calm. I stressed over everything. That guy was, he's facing a murder Maybe. charge. Well, think about it. I mean, he's just obviously, in jail, you there, you have different things to worry about, but you, like a lot of things you don't have to worry about anymore. Maybe he found peace in that. I suppose, but I mean, I don't see how you could be that calm. I'd be freaking out. I mean... You know, he he said a lot on those phones. Never, there was no admission of guilt ever. But it was no, yeah. I mean, I mean borderline. Yeah, well, I, I suppose, but um, just as calm as a cucumber. I mean, they they raised straight fucking G's up in Connecticut because the dude he shot in the face was cool yeah, as a cucumber, yeah, yeah. straight G. Aaron Hernandez is Connecticut, cool as a cucumber. I thought it's like uh, you guys a bunch get some of fucking up there. straight I didn't know, I didn't know. killer <laughs> gangsters oh, yeah. up there, man. Uh, yeah, Jesus. When he, uh, he's a great football player too. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's a shame, but uh, obviously he has some. You know, he's supposed to be a good person, man. You don't go around shooting people like that. I just don't get the 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 mental aspect of that. How you can and that's be their, so that's their saying. amazingly talented. You don't get to the cream of the crop like that unless you're you have real talent. I mean, they did. You know, they a- analyzed him before he went in, and the thing he scored the lowest on was maturity. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I see so that. I guess that was a warning sign, but. Um, you got you, you. I mean, to get to the NFL level, you just have to have it on all aspects. You you can't just be a talented football player. You have to have the look. You have to have the image. You have well, I don't know. I know. I just think you need, you need to be able to play football. I don't you think you could so. be you could be an ugly bucky then, well, looking dude. Then, well, like, no, you well, got a helmet on. They don't give a shit. As well, long no, as you're you blocking. Look, and, you know what well, I mean? Well, that's what I mean by look. Though I don't mean. Uh, I don't mean yeah, you okay, be yeah. GQ. You oh, I to, thought you meant like no, you know, like the look more. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm talking about your performance on the. Yeah, field. Yeah, you got to perform. You got to you got to perform on the field. Right, and, and you gotta. Fl- I guess you have that. Flashier you are, the better, typically speaking. But um, you know that guy had it all. You know he re- he really did, and 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 he's he would have to be insecure he, though. And so I mean the gay paid. thing, and I think that's what they're trying to trying to point out is how could he do all this and and be so like you know shoot, the guy spilled the alcohol on him and tried killing him because he was so insecure because of the whole closet thing. Jeez, I don't know, man. That's uh-huh. a stretch for me. It stretch. is. It is right, and he didn't seem it either. Like he didn't, I'm not that. I mean, I don't know what it's supposed to seem like, but you don't seem it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stretch, man. I I don't know that. To to, you know the 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 one guy that was an NFL player and ended up coming out. He was talking about what it was like to be in the closet, but he never made the reference 
of being insecure around other guys. And he just said, you, you don't do it. It's taboo. If you want to be in that realm, in that world, you keep it buried. You keep it in the closet. But he, I mean, I'm sure that guy was going out and, you know, he was he was clearly gay. He wasn't flipping out and shooting people. And- I know, but he did say that uh, when he was done with football, before he, he came out and realized it wasn't, you know, such a big deal. He was talking. He's. I don't know if you saw at the end of it. He said he when he was done football because at football he can mask being gay because yeah. he was like such a brute and this and yeah, that. Yeah. But said when he was done football, he didn't know what he was going to do. That's said that he was going to kill himself. Oh, okay. So I did yeah. miss that. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. realize. Okay. So and then obviously he he you know I think um, he said he was talking to someone. Someone said, "Listen, if you're you're at the point where you're going to kill yourself, mm-hmm. why don't you tell the people that yeah. before you kill yourself, you're right, going right. to do that anyway? Why yeah, don't you yeah, just yeah, tell yeah, them? Yeah, you know you." So he told them, and his mom came up and hugged him and didn't give a shit, obviously. Uh, you know, and uh, I mean, not obviously. You never know what you're going to get, I guess, yeah. in, in this world. But you, know, you hope that a mom is understanding, I guess. One of the better documentaries, and again, I have to finish it, but one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. But that is totally my style, that sort of murder mystery type, type of documentary where it just leaves you guessing. And, and, and for a lot of people, not... I, I guess me to a degree, but, you know, I've always been into documentaries, but there's been some really good ones come out lately, and I think it all started with um, Making of a Murder. That's the one I didn't see, Making of a Murder. Really? Dude, I heard it was good. And didn't a second part just come out recently? You watched that one too? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I watched the first one with Jenny, and we couldn't stop watching it. We literally stayed up to like 5 in the morning just watching episode after episode after episode. It was so good. And you, you, you leave there feeling one way or the other. I don't think now, it's really... Now, I, I really never seen... I, I think... Now, Making a Murder, it, it's about a guy that was a serial killer. Nope. About a guy they framed. Well, that's... that's The that's, premise. That's You either leave there thinking he was framed, or you leave there thinking he did it, and the cops were just and didn't... Weren't up to any hijinks and... Okay, so I just want to... How is there a sequel? <laughs> yeah, well, he spends a great deal of time in prison defending himself that uh-huh. he's innocent and he has a an incredible following of people that don't think he did it and he's very he's a very unassuming guy you would not think ever that this guy was capable of doing this heinous what, what, murder. what was the what was the murder uh was the cir- well, circumstances? He, shot, he a report not a reporter it was a, a you know like uncle henry's or um what's the uh what's the local magazine where they post pictures of cars and stuff auto auto, auto shopper, shopper. uncle Something, henry's bro <laughs> uncle henry's in maine that's where i grew up <laughs> so they have uncle henry's in maine they have an auto shopper okay. here she so worked for like an auto shopper and went out and right. took pictures this guy and his family owned a junkyard she went out to take a picture of his car and disappeared you know and um they ended up finding her car in his junkyard and if you believe him and his family and that the cops framed him. They didn't like him. He oh, was the like cop, a, saying the cops framed him. Right. He was like wow. a small time, sort of crook, and just you know, like he had he had dumb charges, like you know, like theft and an uh, indecent exposure, like stuff like that. Nothing, no major, you know, crimes. And um, but his family was very poor, and they were kind of the outcasts of town, and they lived on the outskirts of town, and they owned a junkyard, and and you know, their belief is that the town just he was like an easy target. The 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 people never liked him anyway. So, anyway, they, uh, I don't want to give away the whole no, thing. Why, you, what do you think? I left there. I left after watching all of it. Like 75% he did it. 75%. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, now, why, what, like, uh, why would the cops frame this guy? Well, that's, that's the question they're in. You know, why would they? You know, I know he, I'm saying for you, uh, are you looking at it? Like, why would they do that? Like, why, what's the, like, why would they get, what town is this in? Oh, it's in like some hillbilly town mm. in, you know, like corn country. I don't know. Right. Oh, Indiana or something. Yeah. I, I don't know where it is. But um, <laughs> but course, why, I mean, why would they feel? I mean, uh, I guess the angle they pull is exactly what they said. They're not a well-liked family. They're kind of, you know, rough around the edges. And he's a small-time sort of, you know, criminal. And he's done a bunch of, like, little stints in prison and, um, you know, he's not a beloved, outstanding citizen, and they're, they, they're pressured to find who murdered this, you know, innocent woman that has a caring family and people, you know, and they're pressured to do it, and they pin it on him. He's an easy target almost. You know, that's that's sort of the... Yeah, but I mean, do you think the cops, like, <clears throat> the cops, like, how can they live with themselves? Like, all right, this guy didn't do it. We're just trying to make this... Well, they have, some, his, they have some history with him, so they already yeah. don't like him, but you got to watch it, man. If you haven't seen yeah. it, <clears throat> give I'm it a shot. It watch out. it. It's... um. You know, I I don't know that you'll leave there a hundred percent either way. You know, it's kind of kind of leaves you right down the middle. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I like those uh, Love them. those crime ones. What was the Evil Genius? That was oh a great one, too. Oh, my God, bro. That's crazy, right? Bro, Evil Genius is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. Yeah. There are so many fucking plot twists in that fucking documentary. Oh, man. So many. I, it's been a while. It's been, you know, I saw it when it first came out, yeah. but... Uh, that was in PA, right? It happened in PA, the bank robbery. But where? Uh, well, I remember. I, I remember that when it made the paper because it was a famous picture. I, I was out in school during that time, so I had to. I, I, I would have him. had to have heard of it because it was in Western PA, and that's where I went to school. That picture of him with that ring around his neck, that bomb around right. his neck, on his knees with a shirt with uh, I forget what it said. Um, a shirt was something was written on it. Help me or something was written on it. It's a famous picture. It made the papers, but what they don't tell you in the papers. Is that they? It blew up. It didn't blow his head completely off. It killed him, and they surgically removed his head in the parking lot. Get out of here! Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they didn't say that in the uh, documentary, oh, they, did I, they? Yeah, they did. Oh man! They surgically took the rest of his head off in the movie. What does it mean surgically? They cut his fucking head off. Basically, yeah. Basically, <laughs> a doctor. Yeah, a guy doctor, with an guess, MD. Yeah, doctor with a face mask. It's crazy, man. But um, that poor guy. I mean, that guy was definitely he was just a, little he slow, was just right? a guy that was a pizza delivery guy. Now it's crazy. It's funny because you and, know the, the 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 evil genius, the woman who right. kind of orchestrated all this. Well, she she no. She was the mastermind, yes, but she was a master manipulator. manipulator right, I know. That's he, the guy, was the fucking genius. He was the one that rigged oh, the bomb. Oh, the, uh, the the big guy. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. He was like he was like an engineer. He, right, he right. was the smart. He's the genius. She was evil. Uh, evil genius. Okay, she's evil. Okay. He's the genius. Yeah. yeah, I guess that makes sense. But it's kind of funny how she was so manipulative. But you look at her, and you're like, ooh. But yeah. back in her day, I think she was something back exactly, in her day. Exactly, exactly. Well, so I mean, he was no. The power of pussy can do it all. Bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> Ever met a girl you'd kill for? <laughs> I'm living with her, man. I'm living with her. True. Kill True. myself for her. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm just playing. She's been listening, so I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard she was listening. How's it going? Have we talked about anything that's pissed her off? Oh, uh, maybe a little bit, but we're not going to touch up on it. <laughs> yeah, man, there's some uh, Netflix is addicting, man. It's definitely addicting. I watch Netflix a lot, but um, the crime, murder, mystery, suspense ones are always the ones. Dude, that a really in. good one. A really one that's like a just a kind of a just mind fuck at the end. Staircase. Oh, Staircase is great, but this Staircase is not is even good, on Netflix. Man. This is it, it's. I guess it's mur- It's kind of murder mystery. Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, what's the uh, security systems on on computers? McAfee. John oh McAfee. my god! Bro. Did you watch that do- Dude, documentary? That guy is in some freak mode shit. Did bro. you watch it? Watch it. I oh couldn't turn it off. God, bro. was it called something? Gring- get the gringo or something? Bro, he would. He no, would- no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I know what you're gonna get to. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm watching this thing, this documentary, right? You're gonna tell. And John McAfee. John McAfee, John McAfee, and McAfee. he goes down to Belize and kind of takes it over, right? He buys the military, buys the police. Well, this was in his heyday, too, yeah. so we had a lot of money to no, burn. No, this wasn't that long. Dude, this wasn't that long ago. We had, he had the this McAfee money. This was like 2015, 2015, 2016, this was. No. Yes. Really? Want to know why? Really? Want to know why I know that? He was running for the Republican ticket yeah. against Trump. He was like number two, or number three under Trump when this was all going down. Are you sure about those I'm stats? positive. That's not, that's in the documentary. Really? I'm not sure about those stats, but anyway. Yes, all right, here, Lou, if you got a second. Uh, yeah. See when John the McAfee big... ran for president, the most recent time, he probably ran more than once. Well, not even, I, I'm not doubting that he runs. Like, nine million people run, you never no, even no. heard of him. I'm I know, saying, but no, he I'm was, saying that oh, he was, he was, num- he was yes, actual in the primaries, candidate. in the primaries. He, I mean, he, he was, like, below, but, I mean, he was still, he was, like, number three in the Republican uh, primary. Can't be. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Really? Uh, at least that's the document. <laughs> huh? So that's 16. Okay, we okay. got the year right, yeah, so right. now I'm, I'm feeling a little bit. As an independent. All right, see how how the uh, the stats were. Was he that close? I mean, he listen, Trump, I think, took took it pretty quick. Who was Trump going against, too? Well, he had um, the Republican candidate from um, Florida. Uh, oh my God, uh, Rubio? Not, Marco Rubio. Yeah. I, I was a Marco Rubio guy at first, honestly. I really wanted Marco Rubio to win that, but uh, he started slipping up in the... You know, in the debates and, but anyway, um, Rubio was in there. All right, uh, well, we we got sidetracked. So yeah, okay. so this guy was in there. Okay. Maybe, maybe he wasn't. He was he was up there well, he, then, for 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 being a fucking 
All right, then he's in Bo- a freak. He's in Belize. He's yeah. accused of murdering his neighbor because right. the neighbor was mad at his dogs, right. or he was right. mad at the neighbor's right. dogs. Right. I forget. He was driving around town in a tank or a Humvee. Oh, yeah, he bought the police. He bought the police pretty much. Oh, he bought them boats and stuff. Yeah, yeah he, he, right. he he greased them. He greased, he greased them. them, right? Exactly. So, uh, so, but he had his own security guys that were just okay, yeah, nothing but right. gangsters, basically. Right. Yeah. Now. Every time they kept bringing up these girls throughout the documentary, they're like young. You're like, oh, this dude's a creep. He's fucking young girls. What's this thing? Da 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 da. da. So they, and they keep insinuating that he's doing just he's he's like being a pervert. You know, these young girls, right? They were like 15, pervert. right? He 16, took 17, to a whole new right? Level. Yeah, dude. Okay, so you're thinking he's doing this this stuff to these young girls, you know, having sex with them, and whatnot. At the end of the fucking documentary, not just one of them, bro. All of them. All of them. All of them. All yes. of them. Yes. The At the end, story. yeah, all of them. Okay, all of them. Every one of them said, <laughs> "I'll never fucking." I got it, dude. I couldn't I will, believe it. I couldn't. I'll never sleep in a hammock again. Yeah, ever. a hammock it was a hammock. I thought it was like a he, basket. He cut a hole. I cut a hole in a basket. I thought. No, oh, bottom, a bottom of a hammock. Oh, a hammock. I thought and it was he a would basket. Make, he would make them go underneath. Yeah, make him. He'd make them go. <laughs> no, no, he would go underneath. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. Nah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. He would go underneath. Have them sit in the hammock yep. and then sh- defecate <laughs> in his mouth. You can say shit, bro. Hey. I know. I just think defecate <laughs> is a little fat, more more vile. <laughs> Shit's pretty good. Yeah, take a pudding poop in their mouth. Oh, uh, yeah. dude, How, like, what? Like what? In what? Do you think this bullshit? And they're just trying to sell a fucking documentary, or well, do you think this dude really wanted to get? First of all, is that called Bukaki? No, no. What's Bukaki? Oh, bro, come to my house. You got to come to my house on the weekend, bro. <laughs> you kidding me? You know, Bukaki's like, from in my house, oh, that's, like, that's like that's like beginner what? stage. That's making out in my house. Okay. Buk- what is Buk- that? What is Bukaki? It's like where a group of guys jerk off on a girl's oh, face. Oh, a group of guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come over next group time. group of bro. guys. <laughs> no. Will will be there. Will will be there. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm single. Okay. I'm single. But now. isn't that something? That is something. But, but here's the thing is, I mean, creep mode, but how, how, I mean, isn't the goal of any sexual act, any sexual act, and I'm into some freak mode the shit. The release? Right. Yeah. Isn't it all about the organ? It's about to get there. I think, yeah. How do I, you I get think, there with a mouthful of shit? No, I think for most normal people, but some people have like crazy fetish, but they like to be beat, like to be dominated. I mean, and, but, but in the end, is I don't it know. To, I don't know. I th- I mean, really? You'd go through know. all that and not. Well, maybe he, he maybe the shit would make. How do you know he didn't bust the nut after getting shit in the mouth? I, I just don't see. I don't get the connection. Maybe. I mean. I, I mean, guess. I hope you don't get the connection. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. And what? What? <laughs> but what about the girls? I mean. What does that say bro, about them? Bro, they don't have a you limit. Get, you get poop particles in your eye, you get fucking pink eye. What if you get shit in your mouth? What do you get there? <laughs> they don't have a limit. They don't have a limit where they're like, listen, hey, it was all cool when you wanted to bang me in the butt and, you know, maybe some. They some, probably were like, listen, but, I'm just, this like, guy's going to try to do some foul stuff. I just, I just have to shit in his mouth. He's going to give me money. But not one of them okay. said. Not one of them I'm having said, Taco Bell tonight. <laughs> I don't think one of them said that they were in fear for their life. They just no, said, no, they didn't. That's what I mean. They probably, they probably rather do that than have sex. They probably were sex workers, I imagine, right? Well, sort of, I guess. I don't know. You know, they're probably like, fuck, I, I could fucking shit in this guy's when mouth. That, when that first of, one said that, because it went, it was like, it was like interview one, boom. Uh, he used to make me poopy in his mouth, and then interview two, he used to make me do, dookie in his mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, how many fucking girls could say? And it's like interview number three. Ah, oh, yeah. And what, like the third Dude, one was all think, shy. The third one's like giggling, like. I did poopies and I'm like, yo, so did everybody else on the island. Like, who cares? <laughs> Do you think they paid these girls to say that? No. No. Oh, no. Wow. No. That guy's still around. Like, he's still he's fucking still, still at it. He's doing some he's stuff. Still, yeah. He's got to be a, still a millionaire. I don't know if it's a billionaire, he's, he's but a millionaire. He's back in the States now, I believe. I saw he lives but in, dude, like, he, a very like, humble I don't know. apartment. Yeah, he literally killed his, well, they think he killed his neighbor. neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And got away with it? Well, because the the police the, the police swear police. they the police swear they you did a full English speaking Belize is English speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he got away with it. He's running again in twenty twenty. No, he's not. Damn. His breath stink like shit though. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> a poor guy that's got to clean his mic off after the debate. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. That's I guess if you crazy. have money, you could just, like you said, anybody can run for president. Listen, you not that there isn't some freak mode stuff that goes on in the United States, but I feel like if you, you go to any place in the world where people need money, it's just next level shit that goes on over there. Literally next level shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Not that that doesn't happen in the States, but. What, like stuff like that? 
Oh, bro, there's basements all over the place that are. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, what was that? What was that guy? Not that I think he was pooping in anybody's mouth, but the guy in the Bronx that that had the three girls in the basement for like 15 years. Oh yeah, remember? And yeah, they, they finally they got, got him. That was yeah. the Bronx. That was in the Bronx. I thought that was like. I think it was New York somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the Bronx though. No. There was like a house. It was a house in the Bronx? I mean, like, like I don't think. I the think Bronx. it was in New York City somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, somewhere. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but he. Ended, wild, I think there. he killed himself. That guy killed himself. I think. Yeah. How's he not in jail? Oh, he in was. jail, I think he, he killed, killed himself, himself in jail. jail. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I'm pretty sure. I, I, how about how about Jeffrey Epstein? Oh God, yeah, we're gonna get into that. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I know a little bit. Are, I just know. Are we ever gonna find out who he was no. actually tied to, though? Are no. we ever? No, it's just gonna be rumors. Like we're, people right. talk about this forever. People are just going to magically. I've seen people, people are just going to magically start dying if anybody talks about it. So. Like Tim Kennedy, I follow him a lot, yeah. and I feel like I, you know, the military dude, I respect yeah. that guy. And he's Absolutely. like, he's like, listen, this guy was pretty much getting young girls for British royalty and presidents. Like he, this, 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 his suicide should be uh, investigated to the fullest extent. Yeah. And they're just letting it go because they well, don't want okay, to know. But what's where going is on. where where I respect the shit out of Tim Kennedy, but where is he getting that information from? How does he know? That he was getting underage girls for British uh, royalty. I don't know. Where's the facts and the stats on that? Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm a facts but, and a stats guy. Because you hear things. Listen, you can't hate on, you know, you can't hate on some things that there's no, and I do, man. I hate when people accuse people of this, that, and there's no solid proof. But when it's an interesting story, just run with it, you know? Dude, but I mean, just based on what other people are saying, and, you know, you, you say you're a facts, facts, just because... There aren't any facts. Don't mean they're not true. You know, what I mean? just because you don't know the facts, don't mean it's right. Not but true, I would never you know? assume. Listen, we know, we know, I guess unequivocally at this point that he he was involved with underage sex trafficking. We know that, and we know that he's dead. So I look at it like case closed. If there are, are other people involved in that, let the authorities do the yeah, work. Yeah, but you don't think out. like okay, uh, a case closed because this guy's dead. Well, case closed on him. On him, but are, say. Uh, yeah, well, I guess if he was, a, I mean, I, there are I, I other guess, yeah, people not, involved. There has the authorities to do the work on that. Let them not, not rumors, not a UFC fighter that wants to say, I know, I know that he's, you know, um, got underage girls for British royalty. I mean, that's no, yeah. I'm just saying though, he should. You don't think the fact that he he it wasn't he wasn't suicide or he was suicided. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, like well, that should be investigated. Oh, that's what course. he's saying. Course, his yeah, his yeah. murder or his murder or suicide should be yeah. inve investigated to full extent because he could potentially have the the information correct that leads to these so, fucking pedophiles. Right, but do you ever think that these investigations? I mean, they're staged, right? They could be. It could be a staged investigation. It could, if there's, let's say, you're saying like they, they investigated, but they didn't do really. I'm saying it's a possibility. I'm right. saying if this guy had gotten underage girls for really influential, powerful people with money, they could easily stage an investigation to say, "Oh, we found nothing," right? Right. Uh, of course. I mean, well, I mean, you imagine if he didn't kill himself, right? That's why they killed him, <laughs> right? right? Exactly. So they could avoid all yeah, this. It was yeah. So he didn't sing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. If he it's was, now, it, they, if, they I said they said Bill Clinton. They said Bill Clinton flew it. I mean, all I over the place. Flew with him yeah. numerous amount of times without Secret Service. Right. Right. And and you know, I don't know. That'd You'll, be pretty creepy, though. We'll never know. But the bottom there's line a lot of crazy conspiracy conspiracy so theories many, out there, and I they most of them annoy the shit out of me. You're not a big conspiracy I'm theory. Not a conspiracy. I mean, it's cool guy. to talk about and bullshit. Yeah, but I never where, put a bunch. Where is the proof, man? You can't put so much weight into it, but I mean, right. you know, they're they're out there. One of the most annoying ones to me are that the, the United States took down the World Trade Towers and the people that are so adamant that it was absolutely our government that did it. it drives me well, nuts. I I, I I don't know. What's I, the advantage? What 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 for what? Okay, for well, what? The, this is the one. I don't know to, enough to information. To wage I, war I'll bullshit, overseas. I, I, I'll bullshit with you a little bit about it. From what I you know, no, they said something. I actually heard recently that you know. Um, Supposedly, Donald Rumsfeld, I think was was one of the one of our guys was talking about. They lost trillion dollars in in revenue somehow or or money. I'm sure. They couldn't find. They couldn't trace it. Right. He said that the next day, the Pentagon gets that room where they have all the records that they were going to go investigate all this. That room gets taken out. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, it could be bullshit. Again, we're. Either, either it's the biggest cover up in the history of the world, ever, and it was a shitty cover up if everybody knows that it was a scam, or 
it's just not plausible. I think. I mean, any. I mean, go back to obviously JFK and and even go back to uh, Abraham Lincoln getting assassinated. There's, I think, no matter what. There's going to be a conspiracy always, tied to every single always. every single big event just people, throughout history. There are people that ride around with cars written on the back of them. The Earth is flat. I yeah, mean, well, yeah. There yeah. are people that I know that, quite a that, few people. They're flat Earthers. Like, like we've been to space, we've orbited the Earth. We've it's literally fake, we've bro. literally orbited it. It's fake. They think that yeah, they think it's the fake. moon landing was staged. Like, okay, even if the moon landing was staged, might been, it might have been. Okay, let's no. say let's just say that was. I don't believe it, but let's say it was. We've orbited the Earth. We've gone all the way around the fucking Earth. We've seen that it is clearly not. You flat. have, you have. Okay, this is this is, where we, this, this is the route we're gonna go. You have. Well, then you're you then you're married to an alien. Your wife is an alien from outer space. Why can't I convince you of that? Fuck, man, you might be right. <laughs> well, if I if you can convince me that the Earth is flat, why can't I convince I, you? I'm not convincing you nothing. I'm saying, have you been around the world? No, 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 no I haven't. But. I saw Men in Black, and there's a bunch of, <laughs> a, there's a bunch of aliens that live around us. No, like it. I, 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 obvi- I yeah. obviously, well, not obviously, I think the world is is round. I mean, every other object you look in the sky is round. Because but suppose they they believe people people believe it's provable and the it's stars tangible. are fake. I know it's all fake. Right? They 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 think they live in the Truman Show. They're fucking yeah. <laughs> they're fucking idiots. Fucking you ever look at the sky and be like, damn, that moon just seems too close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just believe in. Proof and facts and logistics and stats and I, I I don't think that you can just make a statement because it seems like it's a good idea and therefore it's a plausible possibility. I just I don't buy that because you could say it about anything. Okay, boomer. No, <laughs> I get it. no no. I, I, I'm with you. I'm not a, I'm not a big conspiracy I'm theory not, guy. I'm just I'm playing not. devil's advocate here a little. I bit. I don't believe in in a lot of things. That no, but I, you know they're interesting. They're they're fun to talk about. Yeah. You know JFK. Come on, no way that there was. I mean, it, maybe maybe it could have been one shooter, but you know that guy dies right away. I, I don't know. Come on, there's some fishy shit there going on. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm and not. just like this 9/11, I don't know if it, what went on. I, you don't want to. You don't want to, like, dude. Do you I think I want to like, think? I feel like though, people though, set us up. If all those things, like if, if you're a, if you're a flat earther, if you think our government took down the World Trade Center, if you think, you know, and, and maybe there is something, you know, like Kennedy, Kennedy being assassinated. You know, if you if you believe in all those sort of things, and you just Elvis you just, is alive, you want to go against the grain. How do you sleep at night? I'd be fucking terrified. I'd be like, oh my god, like. You know, it could be a fucking uh, aliens. It could, you you probably believe everything that's in what was that? Inquire, the National Inquire. Like, are all those true stories? You know what I mean? I don't. I I don't want to live in a world like that. So I I, I don't know. It's all. Who knows what's uh, true, what's not true? I think the proof. real real stuff. Proof. The, 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 proof. Well, no, no. Proof. Ah, okay. true and yes, not proof. True, yes, but proof's not always there. Well, I think real shit's more scary than the conspiracy shit, anyway. Right? Yeah. Well, all <laughs> real right, shit's yeah. probably more scary than that anyway. So. Uh, yeah, no, I don't believe any of that. I'm not, you know, I definitely believe mm-hmm. the Earl, Earl, the world is is the round. Earl, the Earl, the Earl. Earl, the world is round. Um, but it's crazy how people think it's flat. I mean, they have a they have a satellite that takes a, a picture we, of of the of flat, the world. We should have the whole a flat world earther on here. Let's have a flat earther guest. on. I know one. You do? I do. Oh my god! Please have him on. I'm just gonna rip him the whole time. Uh, you might. It's Rashad, it's Rashad Evans, I think. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Maybe I won't rip Rashad. <laughs> Bro, he has some pr- pretty compelling arguments, but uh, like what? Well, I mean, I don't know. He says, well, you know, they. <laughs> I, I'm not. Like what? I, I don't want to speak on his behalf. I'd have to let him come here and, <laughs> and, right, and well. talk on his behalf. I mean, maybe not very compelling, but I'm saying for uh, the him, the best compelling argument that I've ever heard is. Well, if I stand here, I can only see to there. So, therefore, how can the world? I mean, that's like the best argument they got. Yeah. You, know what I mean? you, you know, here, here's an interesting fact about the world, and this is from a scientist. So, I know you like how much you like facts. You I know, love Neil, facts. Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love Neil deGrasse. He's yeah. awesome. He's amazing. I heard him say, if you took the world and shrunk it to the size of a pinball. Mm-hmm. All right, now go back. Mount Everest is what? F- how many? Fourteen thousand feet or ten thousand no, feet? Mount, Mount Everest has got to be thirty thousand. No, 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 definitely not thirty thousand. No, it's like a, fourteen, fifteen. Airliners something like that. fly at thirty thousand feet, and that's Correct. airliner, right? Yeah, thirty thousand. That's way higher than Mount, Mount Everest? Everest. Yeah. What do we got? Is it? I thought the death zone was in the twenty thousand range. Twenty nine 
Yeah, what? Wow. Not, holy shit. Damn, you got that. Look at the big brain wow, okay, on so Roger. <laughs> so listen, 29,000 feet Mount Everest, and the Mariana Trench is what? Um, seven miles deep. Seven miles seven deep. Seven miles deep. So. Which, uh, I, listen, I'll talk about this all day. So listen. About what we haven't figured out is I know, the sea. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's an interesting that, concept. Aliens might even be in there. That, listen, I'll talk about that. That's plausible. So listen, that's listen, plausible. Yeah. You know why that's plausible? Because you don't know. Because we haven't discovered it. Right. We've, we've researched it. Well, that's this. just like, can't, you can't say aliens don't exist because you, you haven't discovered it. I never it. said aliens don't okay, exist. Okay, well, you did before. No. It's a conspiracy. No, it's not what I said. So my wife's an said alien, bro. Nothing <laughs> we've seen thus far would legitimize it to me. That there's aliens? Right. Nothing thus far. Mm. Thus far. I'm, I'm, I'm a feel a touch guy too. I'm 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 just yeah. fucking with you here. Yeah. But yeah, okay, so Mariana Trans Mount Everest. So I could two, tell two, girls seven. all day long I got a ten inch dick. It, when they actually see that dick, they could be like, That ain't ten inch <laughs> You could say whatever you want. It doesn't make it true, you know what I mean? Yes. All right. It's nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Jenny's gonna do her first TMZ interview tomorrow. Yeah, like, Fuck, ain't no ten, ain't no nine and a half. <laughs> all right. So speaking of the balls, little balls again, they take the 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 pinball. I said right. Yep. You take the Earth, and now you got you have the Mount Everest and Mariana Trench is from the the highest elevation to the to the lowest depth of Earth. If you take Earth, you string it down to a pinball. They he said Earth would be smoother than a pinball. Smoother than a pinball. That's how big the Earth is when you shrink it down that small. You, you can't even see wait, the in, disparity in, in between Mount Everest and Mariana Trench. You understand what I'm saying? No, you lost me. Okay, listen. Earth. Nope. Okay, you take the Earth. Now, you look at the Earth, right? So as big as it is, you can see a big difference between Mount Everest and all the way to the Mariana Trench. So mm -hmm. They take all the water out of it, right? Right. That That's what? How many miles? Seven... So it's like 12 miles, right? Right. About 12 mile difference between the uh, lowest elevation or the lowest depth to the highest elevation. You take that world and shrink it into a pinball, the size of a pinball, it'll be smoother than a pinball. Like that, that you wouldn't even be able to tell the elevation. You know, oh, or the, or the, oh, the difference. Oh, okay. Oh, you know in I mean? comparison to the yeah, difference. I yeah, that's yeah. a pretty interesting fact. I don't know. No, it, it's, yeah, I don't know why you're going to, yeah, okay. Shrink it, I guess it makes the, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't sell it like Neil does. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Neil, <laughs> Neil, is that how that actually was? That was that what you said? Neil, <laughs> I, I don't think he's listening. <laughs> Neil, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I met him actually at one of, the, uh, one of the PFL he's fights. An interesting guy. Super man. cool man. I'm definitely a big fan of him. Very mm -hmm. intelligent man. Very and intelligent. Uh, he he when he talks, he's not to make. He doesn't lose you. Yeah. He kind of makes. He, he breaks down for the stupid people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he would have broke that down for me then, because I was definitely stupid on that explanation. But now, well, you I, got you. A stupid yeah. guy was explaining yeah. it to you. That's the problem. <laughs> we're, we're both drinking wine too. So, well, you know. Um. Yeah. So we were talking about documentaries. Um. You name. Actually, you know you, what? You I, name I, some of the best ones I've ever watched. <coughs> the stair, Evil, stair, Evil, stair, Evil stair Case was great. Yeah. Case was amazing. Um. You know, anytime you leave or you're so intrigued by a documentary that you can't turn it off and you leave it really unsure. Of whether they did it or not, it's a good documentary. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. It's good. Well, yeah, I guess. Um, Evil Genius wasn't quite like that. You left there you knew, knowing you who knew, did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the fact that you still don't know how it got orchestrated. I mean, there's always yeah. I guess love. Every, love. Well, yeah, love well, was the catalyst for all that. Yeah. Well, he had just the power. Just the power to pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, it's an amazing thing. It is. If you think hey, about it, that's hey. why most pe most dudes are get real smart and they make a lot of money and they get successful and and they you know get nice cars and have nice mm -hmm. houses because they're trying to attract the. I think you. Of sex, I think. Right? I think mo for, for the same for, sex for most know. heterosexuals, you find a niche right that works to attract the opposite sex. Like, you know, um, for uh, bare chested my, I, I, Right. I use myself for example, muscles and. The Guido look, it's its a—it's an image, right? I'm portraying an image to attract the, the opposite sex. But fat guys, there's fat, there's Tony Soprano looking guys out there that pull amazing looking chicks and they find a niche to do it, right? It's either money, they're either really successful and they make a lot of money and they flash it around and they drive nice cars or whatever, or... Power. Power, if you're in a position of power or, you know... It's usually a combo of the two, but confidence sells. Confidence, you can, I think, you is probably be, the, is number one. You can be a, a fat dude, but be confident as a mother effer and pull girls. Absolutely. It's a, it's a state of mind. You know what I mean? Confidence um, is probably number one. 
Humor is another one. I mean, I you, think humor is a big humor, thing. Humor personality and humor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's personality, but it's all the end goal was all the same. You know, it's to attract the opposite sex. Right. Usually, sometimes the same sex, I suppose. But in right. the case of Aaron Hernandez, maybe. But well, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, but you're right. It, it uh, definitely has to do with wanting to get some piece of ass. <laughs> you know, I no mean, question. There's no pe- question. People kind of going for mm-hmm. the gusto a lot, trying to get the power. Trying, I, I you know. It, even the beginning of time, that's what made us a race. Yeah. That's what made us a, 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 a civilization is us wanting to procreate, of if course. you think about of it. Of course, yeah. So if Once we, we were here, established, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, even probably when we were fucking, you know, hunters and gatherers, we were trying to smash because no it was wired in us. No question, yeah. It's still wired in us. Well, it's still wired in us, that's what I mean, yeah. It's still. The levels that and we it's were... Crazy, it's almost like it's not natural, though, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's I guess... You know the programming is procreation. You call, we call it sex, but it's the urge to to procreate. I mean that's real, and that's in all animals. We're yeah. we're an animal species. I mean, look, you ran you, say you ran eight miles when you were thirteen years old <laughs> because the drive the drive yeah. was so in you yeah. to get to the opposite sex. You're right. The opportunity You're right. was there, and you had to get from point A to point B. So you fucking ran it in the middle of the winter. You know, February. It's like in February. <laughs> yeah. So it's like. That that urge and that will is yeah, it's, I, it's it's responsible for a lot of good and a lot of bad. bad. A lot of good and a lot, a lot of good things come out of love and lust, lust yeah. and a lot of horrible, heinous, heinous shit comes out of it. And that's what most of those documentaries are Murders, based on. Yeah. yeah, don't fuck with cats. Oh, bro. How do we forget that? Didn't that didn't have to do it. I guess it kind of did have to do with love. Had to do with his love of attention, but yeah. Well, I mean, he was looking for love from yeah, other people. Yeah, yeah, uh, acceptance, really, yeah. acceptance. But yeah, that wasn't so much a love story. Um, but that no, was no, that, that guy, that could honestly, you could have titled that evil genius because that guy uh, was sort of know. bro to elude the law. Do you think he eluded the law? I think he's, they didn't know about him when they once they found out about no, him, they no. got his ass. If you no, think about it, no, because they went. It's to, a, had a fucking a group of internet people that, that that had nothing to, that had nothing better to do. And no, you know, the crazy let's be thing. Real. The crazy thing is, and again, guys, like, would you too, be one of those is, internet people? Is, no, 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 I don't have the time. Yeah, exactly that's what I mean. Time. So who the fuck does I don't really? Have the time. Internet nerds. But anyway, <laughs> spoiler alert: we're gonna we're gonna talk about don't don't fuck with cats. So if you don't want to know the ending, tune out. But um, that really But subscribe to him first Yeah yeah Subscribe <laughs> to us Before you tune out That that guy Who was a Obviously a sociopath Psychopath um, In the end And he, he was Listen You gotta give him credit That he was A genius I guess Smart in eluding In the art of eluding He went to so many Different countries He didn't use any Currency Other than cash He didn't keep a cell phone He Distanced himself From yeah. everybody he knew I mean that's 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 that's. An, I guess yeah. That's it's commitment. I commitment. don't know if it's a genius. It's just commitment. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it's, it's a disorder right. of the, your personality traits to the point where you can yeah. just. Well, how about the fact that he was so vain, and that's kind of why he well, did all this, yeah, that's and that's what, what kind of got him caught. He had to go see himself in the fucking in, on the uh, internet. But, but if you haven't seen it, guys, it starts out as a guy that does. That's why it's called "Don't Fuck with Cats." He does some heinous things to animals, starting out with cats, and he posted on the internet, right? So. In the end, it gets way more involved. I don't want to give you all the details, but way more involved. It turns into homicides. It turns into some real heinous stuff. But Dude, in the I, end, the guy is really caught because he uploaded that first video by a bunch of cat lovers. That's who gets him in the end. Yes. It's really who right. gets him in the end. It, he, internet group. Yeah. Uh, right? It was pretty much it, it was a, group a that Facebook ban- group or something that came together. together. Yeah. Right. And, and it was really two people. Of that group of the head. Now, remember when the, the, the main girl of the Facebook group, the mm-hmm. one that said, don't fuck with cats, yeah, yeah, yeah. when she got a video of someone walking through her casino, mm-hmm. was that him doing that? Either or him he, or, or he, he just could, took someone else's video and he could, reposted he, he's it. He's smart enough where he could have literally just said to somebody, he knew where she was, he, did, he researched her, figured out the casino she worked for. I don't know that it had to be him per se. Yeah, I yeah. think they could have found him on security camera if it was. Right, yeah. So I think he probably said to somebody, look, I'll send you 50 bucks in cryptocurrency, walk right, through this right. casino and, and send me a video. Send me video yeah. Probably how that went down. Now, how about this? They never brought, who was the other hand in that yeah. video? Well, according to him, it was the guy that made him do it all. I know, but I thought yeah. that was all bullshit. Yeah. Well, yeah. What was, it, was his name Matt Manny? It was Manny? probably yeah. just some other really creepy fuck that just was involved in that one thing. Yeah, I don't know, man. I want to know where that motherfucker's yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a creepy fuck too. Yeah. 
Louie, where were you? <laughs> Um. Yeah, but a great another one that I could not stop watching. Just a really yeah, good no, documentary. It really was. And everybody I talk to, especially girls, I'm like, "Have you seen Don't Fuck with Cats?" They're like, I can't watch that. That's morbid. That's horrible. You don't actually see. I mean, you do a little bit, but you don't see the most heinous shit. Like the guy fucking feeds yes. a cat to a snake. You yeah. It doesn't well, actually you kinda, show. That's you. actually you do actually. I feel like that you could show. That's yeah. kind of natural in a sense. What's but natural it, about that? What a fucking a snake <laughs> eating an eat animal. I mean, that's natural. Well, an animal, yeah. A yeah. snake would try to eat you if it thought it could eat no, you. That's not yeah. natural. <laughs> no, yeah, if, if, if it could eat me, it'd be natural. <laughs> you ain't very big. I'll get a big it fucking. Might be, it might oh, be. It might be. Who wants to see Frankie's next fight against a fucking eight hundred pound anaconda, <laughs> anaconda in this room? <laughs> and not the one in your pants, Roger. Please, please. <laughs> Um, no, but don't fuck with cats. And they, I mean, listen, they just keep cranking them out, and they're they're so well done. They're really so well directed. They're just put together where they just they know how to draw you in. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that but the the fact that they have to make them entertaining and and make them draw you in and get your attention. You wonder like how yeah, much yeah. of a well, theatrical that, that, spin are they putting on okay, it? Okay, so that was the thing, right? With um, uh, making of a murder, right? There was a lot of information especially from the police side that said that that documentary left a lot out on the side of the good, well, the quote-unquote good guys that are portrayed as the bad guys, sort of. They left a lot out. That was what the, um, you know, the police force, the police chief, uh, the DA, um, you know, that was all over a huge settlement that he was supposed to get, you know what I mean? Because he was found innocent of something separate from that murder, and he did a bunch of time for it. It was another murder, I believe, where a girl was killed on a beach, and he was the DNA was the big key in that one. So and, wait, wait, wait. This guy that that they pinned supposedly yeah, may have pinned yep, this murder on right. was was convicted. convicted for another murder correct, correct. that he didn't do. He, well, they found out later that his, through DNA, they know I don't think DNA was well established at that point. But then another guy did it, and I think that guy was already in prison, if I remember correctly. And he was released, but he'd done, again, I don't have the details, guys. Don't ream me out. Let's say he did a decade in jail. They wow. owed him like $8 million or something was what he was going after in a civil suit. And um, that's that's why. I guess that's I, le- I, yeah, guess I left that, this that, out. That yeah. makes, now I that's like kind of what yeah, the pin on. All right. Yeah, I guess okay. I missed all that when I okay. first explained it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. now it makes a little more sense. I didn't just watch right. it yesterday. It was a couple years yeah, ago. I once I, but I that, you, that is why the town was like, listen, if we can pin this second murder on him, we don't have to pay him the, you know, because it would have bankrupt the town, basically, wow. you know. So yeah, not the town, the county, I should right. say. Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of messed up, man. Yeah, I left a good chunk of that out. So sorry about that, guys. It's all right. They hope to watch it anyway, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the fucking Joe Rogan show. No, we're just a couple not. of amateurs here. Yeah, we are. But hey, we're coming. <laughs> well, so your helmet. Someone asked me about your helmet. Oh yeah, that uh, yeah. My buddy hit me up too. Like, why do you have a 15 year old showy helmet sitting up there? That was the helmet I was wearing. So, little backstory on Frankie and I. Um, Frankie, uh, when I moved to Jersey, moved here in '98. Like he said, I think I met him around 2006. But he'd already been established as a fighter. He was new in his career, and I was I'd been a UFC fan since UFC one. I literally had been watching UFC since it came out. It's like the only sport I actually get into and watch. So Frankie being a local guy, Tom's River, we had some mutual friends, was a Nick Scarzone, yep. and um, I met Frankie. I actually met him out one night, and I was, you know, I was fangirling all over the place. But he started teaching MMA. He started teaching, um, you know, some beginner basic courses at the barn. This place called the Barn, and I was like, oh man, I gotta go. I gotta go. You know, I go go hang out with my fucking hero, Frankie. But I rode a crotch rocket, and I would ride to the barn a lot to practice. Well, I knew Frankie had a bike too. And I knew people had told him that I could throw it down pretty good on a on a bike. And one day we left together. He was on his bike. I showed up at mine, and I was like, "I'm gonna really show off in front of this guy. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it down because you know I was a fan of what he did. So I threw it down, and I was throwing it down a little too hard and got a little beyond my. I guess I actually it wasn't. I still don't feel like I was beyond my comfort zone. I was still I still. Nine, if I'd have done that wheelie nine times out of ten to go around that car, it would have worked flawlessly. Just this time, I, I was a little off with my engine braking, and I smacked the tail too hard, and I washed out and ate dirt right in front of Frankie, and that was the helmet Dude, I was wearing. So. He was a 12 o'clock wheelie <sighs> straight up in the air. So I'm li- this is nighttime. Yeah, I'm yeah. literally your, your lights behind yeah. you. And but I came up behind a car. Right, but 
I'm like, five miles. You were riding a wheelie. <laughs> I'm not joking. Five, at least maybe more. Maybe more. As far as you ran to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Straight up. That's like uh, straight up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same, <laughs> same, same way, straight up. <laughs> I was going down the road the same way Frankie was running down the road. Straight, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, and I remember the car came. I don't know if the car hit the brakes, something, but no, whatever. Not the car came. The car was going well, yeah, the same no, direction. Yeah, but we, we came up to the car. We came, we came up, up to the car. I don't and, know if it hit the brakes. Normally, I can slow a wheelie down. I'm, a, I'm an old school motorcycle rider. I was an engine brake guy. I did have a handbrake on that bike, but... I wasn't completely dialed in or comfortable with it yet. It was in the early days of handbrakes. And I wasn't even using the handbrake. I was just using the engine brake, slow it down, stood it real tall, real near the the tail. And um, there was a corner coming up, and I was trying to time it. So I got around the corner, which wasn't a problem, the wheel around the corner. And then, oh, maybe a hill. I guess it was a hill. And then I could see, and I was just going to wheelie around the car. I've done it a million times. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a crazy move or anything like that but i i was i remember getting a little closer to the car because i think the car probably saw me in the rear view and was probably just letting off the gas like what the fuck is going on behind me and i was getting closer and closer and closer and i stood it taller to slow it down more and the tail smacked and that was it just i remember i remember you trying to put your foot down i was doing what the i was doing trying to put his foot down i was doing probably what he 45 maybe 50 at least 50 yeah, yeah 50 and he came back smacked your head on the on the concrete well, no, the bike spit away. I, th- I threw the bike away. Yeah, but your head smashed on the oh, ground. Oh, yeah, that's the helmet. I was like, yeah, turn yeah. that thing around. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <clears throat> Rip, it ripped the, the screen off it. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Oh, crack. That's not even the good helmet. The really bad accident I had, I can't find that helmet. I had a really bad accident in 2001 on Lakehurst Naval yeah, Base. Yeah, yeah, I think you told me this one. That was, said, that was a hundred times worse than that. Didn't you say you had a wallet in your back pocket and it was gone? You melted it completely in half. My wallet was melted. I still have the cash. Taped to the helmet, which I can't find. It's somewhere in an attic somewhere. Taped to the helmet that I was wearing that looks 10 times worse than that. But, yeah, I was co- I was so covered in road rash, bro. It melted. It melted all my clothes off me. I broke my ankle, my collarbone, and something else, but that was nothing. That, that didn't even hurt. The, the broken road, 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 road rash. I, I stood up and my foot was facing like that way. It didn't even. I was like, I ain't worried. Bro, I was pumping blood out. Of every, I was doing about 100 and... Over a hundred and and crashed on a runway on a runway that a plane is supposed to land on on Lakers Naval Base, and slid. Well, the police drew the scale, and all I remember, and I still have it. I can bring it in here. They drew the whole scale of the accident, and it says first blood spot right here, and then it says bike part, bike headlight, bike his, and then the last blood spot it says big blood stain or whatever is written on the thing is three hundred and forty nine feet apart. So I slid the length of a football field at least. Wow. With a guinea tee on and jeans, which it just shredded. Oh. You know I mean? yeah. Now wait, <clears throat> how'd that happen? Showing off. But I mean, what, you, that was before, in a wheelie. In yeah, a wheelie. Yeah, I was in a wheelie. That's before I could stunt. Stunt though. That's before I really dialed in. I was pretty good, man. For no, you know, dude, you used to rip that bike, bro. I felt like to me, it felt like you were you were ripping a BMX bike around. Yeah. The way you I, yank it up, I got jump on the, good. sit on the uh, handlebars. Yeah, this was before I di- dialed in hand foot yeah. brake and. You know, all those sort of things. I was on a brand new R1, brand freaking new. I had 800 miles on it. YZF R1 Yamaha. 800 miles, right? And I was with my buddy Mike, who could get, who had access to get on the Navy base, because I'm not even going to tell you how, but he was, we were legally on the Navy base. And um, he specifically wanted to see me wheelie on those runways, because I was a pretty good wheelier. But I was, at the time, I was a sit down wheelie guy. You know, if you sit down wheelie, Unless you're doing, unless you're running the shit out of your foot brake and stuff, you're just high speed. You know, you're low wheelies, high speed, going through the gears. When you're standing up and catching that dead air and getting closer to 12, you can really slow them down. But I was just a high speed wheelie guy back then. But I could ride a long one. As long right. as it was straight, I could ride. So he wanted to see if I could go from one end to the other. And we did about uh-huh. four runs on it. And the fourth, and he had, no, he didn't have a camera. I think this was before even the days of cameras, but he wanted to clock me on his bike. <laughs> Four days of cameras. It was like, well, no, I, I mean, he would have had a camcorder yeah, yeah. like that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So before the days of, like, you know, good cell phone quality cameras, it was in 2001. So mm-hmm. it was, you know, the fucking better part of 20 years ago. Yeah. So anyway, um, he said to me on one of the runs, okay, let's see how fast you can go. Like how fast in a wheelie you can get going. All right, let's do it, man. I was always game. I was just always a gamer on a bike to try how, anything. You're, so at this, is your... How old? Oh, that was 20 years ago, so I was 47. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I was, Shit, 20 years ago, yeah, 24. I was 20, 24, 25, wow. something like that. Wow. 
So I was like, let's do it, you know. So we we lined him up, and he was like, I want to see how fast I watch on my speedometer because I don't watch the speedometer when I'm wheeling, sitting down. I'm I'm hanging out. I'm kind of steering, but I'm hanging off either side of the bike and looking. And we got ripping. And I remember going through the gears: first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And I think I was in fourth gear if I remember right, but I was topping out on fourth. I was getting to the point where I needed to shift into fifth, and showing off. I'm doing over a hundred, and he's right next to me. He's probably. Three feet, four feet to my left. Wheelie or just in a wheelie. But he's in wheelie also. No, no, no. Oh, no. he's he driving. Couldn't, he yeah, couldn't yeah. even wheelie. Okay, barely. And he's driving. He's on a ZX9 Ninja, and um, I remember like, okay, this is a piece of cake. You've done this a million times. Let's 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 kick it up a notch. So I took one hand off my left hand because I got to stay on the throttle, and I did the number one, and I put it like right in his face, like right in. The, and when I did, I either caught a little groove in the in the runway or a little wind hit me. Those are your two nemesis is when you're in a wheelie, any, you know, any change in the, the pattern of the road right. or a pothole or a wind gust. Like those, when you're going that fast, those are the things you don't want to experience. And I had one hand on it. So I got a wind, and this thing started like getting all squirrely, right? So obviously, time to touch it down, right? You got to put the front tire down. Well, the front tire... Unless you want a high side, which is what happened to me, it's got to land true with the back tire. You got to be in line. I I was not true. I came down like cockeyed, uh, and it literally it felt like somebody grabbed me by the it felt like God grabbed me by the seat of the pants and just threw me forward. I just immediately launched out in front of the bike, right? So you were not next to the bike? No, it threw me right over the handlebars and I landed in front of the bike. And I remember the first thing that hit was my helmet smacked, and I started sliding on my shoulder, and I. For a second, I think I went out because it was kind of like I don't remember much, but it was after dark. It was nighttime, right on the edge of dark. And um, I remember coming to sliding, just ragdolling, sliding down this runway, right? And I remember sliding, you were, you were rolling. Not rolling. I was sliding, but on every, I would go to my chest and my back to oh, my, wow. you know, like just, I was going so, I was going over 100, you know? So, um, I can remember that happening. And then I can remember getting little glimmers of sparks. Like little, I could just see, I'd see sparks, and then I'd be gone. I'd be sliding, and I see sparks, and I'd be like, you know, I remember, you know, because everything slows down. It really does when you're when you're in a trauma situation. Shit goes slow. It goes silent, and it goes slow. And I remember thinking, what the fuck is that? Like, what is sparks? Well, it was my fucking bike coming at me, right? Oh. It's catching up to me, sliding down the road, and the fucking thing hit me. I, was, I might have made it. Let's say I slid 390 feet. I made it to the. 200 foot mark sliding still going like a bat out of hell and that fucking bike hit me <laughs> slammed into me because it was going faster than me and then bounced up over the top of me and went past me wow. so now i'm sliding behind the bike and thank god the gas tank didn't rupture and there was no fire or anything like that thank god and finally came to a stop and the second i came to a stop the second i jumped up and was like let's get out of here let's get out of here mike call um, i was living with this kid chris at the time i said call chris get him to grab my truck and get out here immediately because i'm the first thing i'm thinking of is I'm gonna, lose, cops, yeah. I'm gonna lose my job. I drive for a living. I'm gonna lose my job. I'm on a navy base. I worry about my injuries later, just like when I crashed. Kind of funny. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, you you yeah. were like that. You, I, I he falls. I pass him before I turn around. He's fucking up. Has the bike yeah. up, picking up. Like, what are you doing? I, I worry about the injuries later. I was more worried about getting in trouble, right? So I, I tell him, and he's like, "Bro, you are bleeding everywhere. Sit down." I remember him like looking shocked, like, "Sit down. You're bleeding everywhere." I said, "Fucking." Call Chris, get him out here with my truck. He has to get out here now. Call him. So he's trying to call Chris. Chris isn't answering. And I remember like a minute or two went by and my body just started trembling, like shaking oh, un you're in shock, uncontrollably. Right? I'm just like, fuck. And I'm like, why is my fucking hands? And I'm looking and blood is running down my arms. Running, I mean, I was just, my pants are shredded. My shoes blew off. No wallet in my back pocket because it melted right down to my ass. A road rash was the worst injury ever. I mean, I was just covered. So I went to the trauma center. They they were going to airlift me, but they couldn't land on the Navy base. So they threw me in an ambulance, screened me up to Jersey Shore Trauma, and treated, you know, the first thing they do is, you know, check out your injuries and analyze you and whatever. And obviously I was, uh, I, looked, I looked like Freddy Krueger because I was just, you know, if I take my shirt off now and the sun hits my arm, like you can see it from there. You can see all these ridges and shit yeah. and scars on my elbows and stuff, but if I take my shirt off now and you, I'm tattooed head to toe, but if you look at my back in the right lighting, you see all these lines every which way, and you know and it's, from, the it's from the road. It's from the <laughs> So anyway, they they strip me down naked and they analyze everything, and I think they heavily sedated me, and I probably passed out the first night. 
And then I wake up the next morning and I'm like twice the size I was the day before. Swollen. Because your body is fighting that infection and is pumping shit. Because, you know, I had gravel stuck inside uh, and it's trying to push that shit out, you right. know? So, like, this white, it wasn't even blood, it was this white ooze that was just dripping off me everywhere. And I was like the stay plus marshmallow man. I opened my eyes and there's a cop sitting there. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy want? You know what I mean? And he's sitting there. He's like, hey, Mr. Matthew, I've been sitting here for a while waiting for you to wake up. I'm so sorry I got to do this, but here's seven tickets. So I was like, I was trespassing on federal property, like fucking a whole bunch of shit, right? Oh, and I, I was, But I was like, fuck it. I'm not worried about it. I knew my dad was driving down from Maine. My mom was there. I was like, whatever. I'll handle that later. And by the way, I can't say how, but I beat all those tickets in court. Every one of them. Nice. I represented myself. Didn't even get into that. Yeah, I can't tell you how, like, but. Aaron um, Brockovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was that was a rough one. But that was by far, nope. that was that accident with you times 100. That was that one sucked, man. Yeah, I couldn't have. It was a long sound. rehab period just because. I remember they sent me home after like seven or eight days. They sent me home, and I had, to, I had a roommate. I lived with, you know, this guy Mike and stuff. I couldn't go there. I had to go to my mom's, and I can remember my mom used to have to bathe me. I'd have to get in the shower, and my mom would have to wipe me down. And I can remember... Dude, it's gross, but like, it wasn't even like a scab. It was like fluff. It was like white. Yeah, oozy. yeah. She would wipe, and it would fall off onto the fucking uh, shower floor, just like these sheets of skin. It was disgusting. Yeah, that's like a, when you get burned. The things like that. Too, yeah, right? I yeah. healed up I mean, well. It's kind man. of a burn. You want to know the crazy? Rash. You want to know the crazy thing? Is I had the the worst scar I had was on my right shoulder. I had this huge raised hematoma scar. Right, it was this huge. Scar. It was always, you know, it stuck out probably an inch. I called it my hamburger. It looked like a hamburger. It was about this big. So I sleeve myself out. I got two sleeve tattoos. The tattoo guy wouldn't tattoo it. He's like, oh, my God, like, I don't know what to do with it. So we made it into a skull, right? And we made it. We, it looked like a brain almost. It looked like brain matter. So we just left it empty. We made the skull around it, and the center of the skull was the big scar. Mm-hmm. But it always, like, didn't look quite right. It always kind of bothered me and stuff. And you know, fast forward like 16, 17 years, about a year ago, I go see my new tattoo guy. And I'm like, bro, can we tattoo that scar? He's like, I mean, yeah, I, I can tattoo it. I'm not sure how it's going to hold ink. You know, probably won't feel any different for you. But, you know, well, let's give it a shot, man. I'll, I'll, I'll draw, you know, I'll put some actual brain matter in there. He tattooed that thing and it's completely flat now. But yeah, it fucking flattened yeah. it right out. It's crazy. You know, I bet you because yeah. the tattoos like created trauma yeah. and it probably healed. That's like that tw- micro uh, twenty years. I had this is. huge hematoma scar, and if you looked at it now, you probably because it's tattooed too. Probably couldn't tell. You probably couldn't tell. Yep. Now, how, like your psyche to jump back on a bike? How, how could you do that? No problem. I was on a bike with a cast still on my arm, wheeling down my road with a cast still on. It's just I have a love. The only reason now, and the love is still there, bro. I can't get. I'm not a stunter anymore. I don't have a stunt bike. I don't have a. stunt. You have the KTM now, right? I still have the KTM, but Man, I don't. You have, really that bike? Oh yeah, all the time. But I don't have a bike. <laughs> I don't have a bike. We went to Lake George with a couple really good stunt riders. My buddy Joey that wheelies the fuck out of an 800 pound Harley Road Glide. And, Could you do that? And another guy. And it's the the learning curve on that's a lot mm-hmm. higher. So pro, no. Could I just jump on it and do it? Absolutely not. But My, eventually you get it. Uh, yeah, it's, pra- it's, pra- it's seat hours, yeah. man. Seat time. You put seat time right, in, right, you right. figure like out anything. anything. Like anything. Yeah. Like you don't get to be a well, UFC. I don't know if I I'd be able to figure it out, but yeah, I got what you're saying. You don't get to be a, a UFC Hall of Famer by taking two MMA classes. Yeah, yeah right? no, you of course. Put, you got to put course. the time in, right? So, and another kid Monday that's really good on a street bike, right? So we went to ride with them, and I could not, ask Louie, I could not just sit on the side of the road and watch them. It was like 10 of us parked on the side of the road watching watch them. I watched them for about five minutes, and I said, fuck it. I'm riding a $17,000 KTM. These guys are riding bikes, that, you know, probably, well, Monday's bike is decent, but it's set, it has a cage on it, roll right, cage, yeah. got a scrape made, bar. Made for it. If it falls, See, it's, it's, it's... They're it's made what, for yeah, stunt riding. Yeah. I'm like, fuck it, I got to get... And I couldn't stunt on their level, obviously, but I went out there and started blowing circle burnouts and shit. I was like, you know, fucking, I still got it yeah. a little bit, you know, a little bit. You do endos and stuff? Yeah, yeah, oh, I could man, ride some stoppies, yeah, awesome. yeah, 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 yeah. I had a bike for a little bit. Yeah, the I red scared one. the hell out of me. I know. I rode with you. I scared the hell out of me. It's a CBR 600, right? CBR 600, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a Harley now, yeah. but I never ride. I know. Ever, I tried to get you to go to Lake I, George, but I, I know. Well, I, it's just timing, but I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. Well, we don't ride to Lake George. We trail. We rode the first uh, year, and it almost uh, killed us. Yeah, yeah. The ride up wasn't bad because we were so stoked. We were like, Lake, we don't even go on bike week for Lake George. We go for a car weekend. Right, it's kind of the opposite of what everybody else does. But the first year we went, it was completely unplanned. 
to go up on car weekend. You didn't know it was car we weekend. We didn't even know. Going up. We uh-huh. had such a good time. Now we do it on car weekend every year. We're like the only bikes up there. But, and we do it with the same group of guys every year. Louie goes every year, and it's a really good time. But we met some local riders, like I said, Joey and Monday, that get us in all the hot spots and any restaurant you want to go or anybody. Because they're the local guys, and they're local stunt riders. I mean, they're sick. Joe, what Joey does on Harley's insane. Um, but anyway, um, so we do it every year, and I, I tried to get you to go. I think last year I tried yeah, to get you to go. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just cool, man. We trail her up now because the first year we rode up, and it's like four-and-a-half-hour ride, I think. On street bikes, and that's the right. We were so gung ho the first year. We were like, "Yeah, like fucking, let's go!" And we're all ripping 100 miles an hour, and we're trying to get there, and no problem. But then we rode home Sunday after Beat. two two solid nights of going out drinking. It was hell, bro. It was I hell. It was a five hour ride, right? Dude, no. it was hell. We stopped at every rest stop and pounded a Gatorade. <laughs> drove to the next row, pounded a Gatorade. Drove to the next. <laughs> it was hell. So now we just trail them. So yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm gonna have to take that trip with you one day, bro. It's so much fun, man. Not that we don't I literally even, haven't drove my boy. It's not I like drove. we even go up there like womanizing or anything yeah, like yeah. that. We go out. We Lou, some, Lou, maybe Lou. Yeah, maybe. Lou, the man whore <laughs> over there. Lou doesn't. Okay, so you want to hear a Lou story? Like Lou, um, Lou has owned a liquor store. He's owned a number of liquor stores, but he owned one for well, partners in one. He had a partner, but he owned one for solid. I don't. I'm guessing, but no, two actually. Um, ten years? How long? Ten. Let's say ten years. A decade. He owned a liquor store. Right, but his kids basically were raised in a liquor store, you know, running around, you know, because mom and dad worked at a liquor store. So, um, you know, I, I've been friends with Lou for twenty years. So I always say, like, let's have a drink. He's drank one time on his tw- not even on his twenty first, on his twenty second birthday, and he got so drunk he rode off drinking. He'll never drink again. Uh-huh. But we go to Lake George, he'll have a couple drinks. Yeah, it's the only time he'll do uh-huh. it. Lake George, okay. yeah. yeah. Not it's nothing, just, not on our level of getting banged up. I never get sloppy drunk anyway, ever. I can drink a lot and not get sloppy. But you're a fucking giant. He'll, he'll have you know two or three drinks while we're out and get a little, little get a little, a little loose. loose. Hey, it's cool to see. Yeah, you know, getting a little loose right now, mm-hmm. buddy. <laughs> You want to uh, wrap it up? I think it went pretty good. I, I don't know good. how long we're in for. That was, that was a pretty so, good run. <laughs> the thing with Frankie and I, we never really discuss too in detail. We throw a few subject matters out there, what we're going to talk about for our podcast. The reason for that is we think it flows a lot better when we just shoot from yeah, the hip. Yeah, so. man. Let's keep it real. We're having a lot of fun with it, guys. We want to thank you, um, our fans, our followers, our subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing, giving us a shot. We, we're enjoying this. We don't have any dreams of being you know, rich and famous doing this. This is just too... Long time friends sitting back, kicking it, and we've got some some other really cool ideas that we want to do in the f- very near future for our YouTube channel. So stay tuned and please subscribe to that. It's gonna be some cool stuff. We want to do some daddy daughter stuff that's gonna gonna surprise you guys. So. Yeah, having a lot of fun with this, and I keep it rolling. So continue to tune in, continue to have some take this ride with us. Yeah, Peace. champ of the tramp, baby. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>